Ja, nur vor dir, himmlischer Vater, wollen wir unsere Only for Knie you we will bow and we will kneel before you and we will recognize you are the only one true God and we are today before you with our thankful hearts because you are a good Lord and you have good plans for us you are, you are preparing a future for us and you are giving us hope we want to come to you in mercy you said everyone who is searching for you will find Find you. you are a good God who is speaking upon our lives through the pastor Ingolf Eisel. I thank you for, his, for your word and we want to look into this word like look into a mirror because we know you have good plan for us, you have mercy for us and you have fulfilled life for us and we bless this service in your name and use him to spread your word and we decide to listen to your word and to stick to it. Amen. Please take a seat and let us to greet Pastor Ingolf. Yesterday we started with the first service and we are really eager to listen to the service today. Yesterday, I told you about how we are committed to the Church of the Lord and how we should behave. And yesterday, I was the first time preaching for you, and I was... Um, worried because my because I thought this church was so small and I thought the church should support me so I would preach for my salary so you would say yes yes I know why you are telling so and there when God guided me to search and find the right word. So I got the history of Joshua looking for the promised land. It's a very um, hard story, but you should know that Canaan that was the first time uh, entered was also entered before by Abraham with his small family and he had Isaac and then Jacob, Jacob and generation after generation this land was being populated and so they went from there to Egypt and that's another story. But from the time of Moses, Canaan was a country, was a land where there was a lot of thieves and bandits. And that's the history like the Bible tell us that this country, this land was populated by thieves and they were robbing others. They were nomads and they were going through these places. So now they are coming to Canaan and Joshua was making his first steps crossing Jordan and with his horn, it was, uh, oh, he was playing the horn against a nine meters wall and 
the, the, these people were hovering and take properties of others. And according to the Lord, there was a um, commitment from the Lord to free people from our enemy and not let them contagious others uh, remind cor Corona time. So remember this um, situation that these people living in Jericho, they were serving idols and they were telling, uh, and God told nothing there would belong to these people. So, the people from Israel, from the Lord, were praying and was playing the horn, and this wall fell down, and they could take this land that these bandits and um, thieves took away. So that's why the Lord expelled all these people from this land. And now there was one man called Achan. And he was not really um, accomplishing the, or the, the commandment of the Lord concerning the properties. So after um, the Jewish people were commemorating this victory. Joshua sent thousand people, not all, the, not all of them, but just thousand, thousand people, and they came back, and they were beaten up, beaten up, and they were killed. And if I start to reflect about it, it's about the, how we behave concerning money and property. So we should learn from the history. So the the, the leaders, if they don't understand it, and think that they should do more so they can they offer more so they can get more. But the Lord said, what telling us that what is blessed property and what is not blessed by the Lord. So Aachen was... Um, jeopardizing the blessing of the whole community. It's not about being a detective. Let's the um, tax um, employees, um, officers do so. Before we go back to the verse, from Luke 16, talking what the Lord teached us, what we should do with the very little we have, if we don't are faithful to this little, how can God entrust us more? So we are connecting these both part of the verse, so we should understand that as people who are building up a church, because Jesus told us to build up his church, we should understand we have to encourage each other to be trustful to our properties and how to handle with it. So that's why I'm going back to this history of Zacchaeus. What um, compromise Zacchaeus had to Jesus. So he was, uh, Zacchaeus was sitting on a tree and because he was very small and Jesus looked up and 
told him if he would invite Jesus, Jesus would come to him. So he came to Jesus and he wanted to do so. He was friendly and after encountering Jesus, uh, he told Jesus something. Um, the Bible doesn't tell us much about the details, but he knew about the Bible and he knew what to do. Lord, I will give back everything I took away from others, and I will give it back in a multiple way. So, so if Moses told in, the, in his commandment, if somebody is a thief, took away something from others, he should give four times what he has told from others. In the New Testament, it means to give a compensation, to make it right. And when it comes to be committed to God, we should see what Zacchaeus did with his money. Whatever he was asking so much for taxes, and that what he could do in his position, he was prepared to give it back. And from this moment, I understood, yes, that's clear that your church should hear about it. And the Holy Spirit should act upon the church and show them how they should deal with property, if they are doing it according to God or if they are dealing with it as if they were their own God, handling with their own values. Think if they are Christians, they can do it right. It's not only people in Switzerland or in North German. It's happening everywhere. I was very motivated by preaching these words, and I was seeing this church before me, and I saw that this church is prosperous according to the blessing of God. And there are people, they are not knowing how to deal with it. How much will you do or will you pay for a soul? A lot had to think, a lot of things has to happen. If God, if the church is noticing that uh, um, if the church are dealing with it as if they want to know who are Aachen and how are others dealing with this question, we should understand that Jesus wants to give us more because he told it belongs to us already. That to, to give it out to us so we can receive it. It has a very conflictual um, relation. So we have to have a look in our lives and see what we should do. Just be courageous and let the word of God act upon you and let it be a help for you. If somebody is understanding it and is changing their lives, so I'm not wasting my time here. I will not repeat what I said yesterday. I'm going to the fourth item. It's according to faithfulness. It's a test where the Bible is telling us how to deal with properties and how we, how can I um, pass it to you? Can you see these points? Yes. The second Corinthians 9, 6. Those who are saving will be um, having a prosperous harvest. If I'm not going to explain the context because the word is clear. So the, this um, connection to 
uh, agriculture with um, sewing and um, getting the harvest. We understand that our bread is not coming from the bakery, but somebody was um, planting the seeds. In the earth. They were putting the seeds into the earth. So in the, in the spring time, if you are a farmer, you will see that this will grow. So why we do so? Because the farmer understood a very important information. If we plant uh, a seed, this will grow in multiple ways. So that's why it is very important to give the seed into the earth. So the Church of the Lord should understand and be testimony how these people who are faithful and are practicing this acting of giving away are being prosperous. And this is characterizing a church who is following Jesus. The Jesus we are carrying into us who is saving and is just planting one seed or ten seeds, we'll get much more. But if we think about a square kilometer like in Mecklenburg for Pommern, because in the time of the democratic Republic, we had huge fields and we were harvesting a lot. But there was a lot of investment. How much we would invest if we as a church would invest the word of the Lord as seeds. And if we go for different generation and, and society classes, and we would also be rich by Harvesting. Is there anybody, one, anybody sitting here who believes what I say? If yes, I can hear it. We tried it before, but it was not really working. But in the scriptures, there is um, a proof that we can do a lot, but if we don't have the blessing of the Lord, it's not working exactly. There is an um, agriculture initiative when you are giving the seeds into the earth and there is no rain, like this summer in the north, in north Germany, so all the fields were dry. So the farmers invested a lot and they cannot um, be successful. They have to dismiss his uh, workers and they are having losses. So we have 5,000 churches. Imagine that. And if this church is not growing, they will bankrupt. bankrupt. So if there is no blessing of the Lord, so there are some churches are thinking how they can modernize their service. And God is saying we love the eternity, but not the modernity. So if there is an Aachen, who is um, avoiding the church to be prosperous, so it's time for the church to think about it and take the decision to not be like this. 
I don't want to block a church who is saving his seed will have a very little harvest. But if you are generous by giving the seeds into the earth, so we'll have a big harvest. Maybe you can speak in a good intention and give the right words to others so we have a big harvest. There is a verse talking about if there is the root who are very... Egoist and don't want to give more. And if they are afraid to give away, we'll block us. Maybe our publicities are influencing us, but in our spirit, according to Paul, there is an origin of something bad in us. But it's not very easy to understand it in a capitalist system in capitalism non -kapitalistisch zu sein. to be a non-capitalist. You can live with a lot and you can live with Entspannt a few. Das, ne? It das sounds very Bible. interesting. In That's how it's written in my Bible. In Sometimes Paul had few and sometimes he had a lot. Sometimes um, to being successful and raising it's very easy, but if they are uh, decreasing and um, having less, they feel stressed and they lose his, their own values. So let's talk about um, uh, couples having these kind of problems and having also problems in their relationship. So there are a lot of people uh, eager to, to have more money, to grow very fast. But you can prove yourself, and if you recognize this uh, tendency about thinking a lot about money, but if you go into the bank, of course you can think about money. But if you're not, you will see that this topic will take a lot of space in your life. And it will, will influence your devotion. And you, it can transform money into an idol. So it, there is a spiritual aspect in this topic. So I will stick to this um, uh, topic concerning investment. There is a verse about a man who is spreading a lot of things they had and the other a saving the other one is saving, and this both person understood were in this verse. One of them understood what was um, special about giving away, and the other was sticking to being egoist and um, retaining what he had. So in the verse 20, it is saying, who is giving away? will be uh, blessed and fulfilled. And the other who is retaining his um, seeds will be cursed. So let's stick to this 
agriculture picture. Imagine a very big farm in Bern. Maybe this uh, farm would feed the half of the population. Maybe this farm is building a lot of um, of places to retain the seeds. Nobody is getting the seeds. So the problem is with the farmer who is keeping this harvest. And what he gets, it should be delivered to the people. So this blessed coming to him should be spread and all of them, all people should enjoy it. I remember a, teacher, uh, remember a teacher who told me to take one um, piece of paper and write my name. And after writing my name on this paper, all the uh, classmates and me should throw these papers in the middle of the class. So later on, when I was in the third grade, and he told us to search for our paper. And we were looking for it, and it was taking time, and nobody could, not everybody could find it. Then the teacher stopped this exercise, and he said, let's change this, uh, the task. So those who find a paper, with the name of another maid, should bring this paper to the person whose name was written on the paper. So after a very um, short time, everybody had this paper with their own name. So it was about helping each other. And it shows that the development of a community is um, depends on this aspect of helping each other. So if somebody who got the paper with the name was not his own, was not being um, depressed or disappointed because they were, he was glad to give it to the other. So he gave it to the other, and that's the secret about giving. Let's go to Acts 20. We should, in our work, take care of the, those who are weak. We should think about the Lord who told us that giving is better than taking. Maybe uh, this aspect of um, being holy by giving away, it means to be happy by giving away what you have. It means if you give something to somebody, it makes you happy. You will note that it makes really um, a joyful feeling, gives you a joyful feeling, especially on Christmas when you give gifts to your family. So, for instance, if, um, if a person is working at the government as a accountant, he he will note that at, at the end of the year, uh, his uh, city was having a lot of um, money and they are happy about it. So let's go to Luke 20. Uh, let's talk to the very basic um, principle that giving is better than taking. If you make a meal in the evening or for lunch, so invite not only your, don't invite your friends. And it's really uh, understandable that's great to invite your friends. But Jesus is saying not to invite your friends 
not to invite your relatives, also not to invite the very rich neighbors around you. So what a great meal. Sometimes it's very good for your career if you invite your boss for coming for dinner to your place, eating with you a steak, and we to help you by climbing the ladder of your career. That's what we say, one hand is washing the other. That's what people say in the capitalism. So Jesus said, not only invite these, the others, so these people don't feel like inviting you back. So if you are making a meal, so you should invite the poor people, those who are disabled, who are blind, And you will be happy because they don't have nothing so they can give you back. It will help you when the resurrection of the righteous will take place. What's Jesus doing to me? Ich bin ein Förderer gewesen von meiner Jugend an. I am somebody who is um, very into worship. I was giving a seminar concerning worship, but that was really a conflict in my church at that time because it was in a. Uh, sometimes our chorus text was not so uh, deep in the mean, concerning meaning as the traditional uh, songs. But sometimes it was not about being so intellectual by reading books, but it's important to give a meaning to what you were singing with your heart. Why am I telling you this? Because our Lord understands how to uh, give an approach to each topic. So if when we are in his presence with um, a thankful heart and worshipping, and worshipping, that's how our service begin with worship. We praise the Lord. Sometimes, um, according to the Bible, we should uh, sing a thankful uh, song and uh, sing how important it is to have the presence of the Lord in our lives. And this will grow and will bring us near to the Lord and we have an intimate intimacy with God and we will be joyful if we invest like this. So if we worship and we note how God bless us, so we should understand that the behavior, behavior with our properties and with everything we have should be um, considered in the same way we consider worship. Fatale Vorstellung, dass man Gott einschnürt in so einen schmalen Segenskanal, wo er doch das eure, also das, was euch gehört, in beiden Händen hält, um es zu geben. Nun geht es darum, diesen Segenskanal zu weiten als Gemeinde. Und wenn wir alle diese Vision, die ich versuche, in euer Herz zu schreiben, wenn ihr das anfangt zu sehen, dass man als Gemeinde dieses Stadtbewegen kann, wie es noch nicht zuvor bewegt worden ist, dann muss ich das doch mal aussprechen dürfen. We das have ist, to talk about it. It's not 
not um, a trick. I'm talking about a God weiß, who makes also, everything pastor possible. Each pastor wants to be listened when he is preaching the gospel. And I was uh, wanting the same. And afterwards, it came after a, a time, it happened. It was a service that was being broadcasted in ZDF, in the television, and it was a live broadcast. A lot of people was not um, coming to our service, but to this broadcast, they came to us. And it opened the channel of the blessing to our church. As much as we are good, as much as we are systematically developing in this direction, uh, being modern and being relevant in our services, and offering a good place, um, a good church with good seats, with a good band and with a good-looking people. It's not enough. We are very comfortable by saying, come, everything what is possible and natural will come to the plan of God. Everything that's coming from the spiritual point of view will have a spiritual result if we are working in a powerful environment and it's not coming like we expect. We have to think of the history of Aachen. If when we think about the, when God was not blessing them, because in that at that time a church was really a very big evangelization, and a lot of people. Uh, were coming to the Lord. And all these people were valuable. And there was a city where nothing was happening. And should, it should make us thoughtful because God wants to save us. Especially this time after Corona and um, where a lot of wars are taking place. There are people who are so afraid and people are needing the message of the Prince of Peace. And Jesus told us this, this time would be very um, challenging. And Patmos, in Patmos, John saw what ha would happen. He had a vision. So they were saying that a lot of people were coming before God and he came with white dresses and they were, they were shouting, holy are those who are on, are the one who are on the throne. And that was a worship. And that would be great if a church could take this place. When we take the book of Revelation, so it's written that you should give the salary to, the, to your workers, to all those workers who are serving you. So we are talking about the prophets, about the, the saints, all those who were having a very difficult uh, path, all those who were spreading the name of the Lord and were fearful to the name of the Lord. And these people would have their salary, everything they were um, having in heaven. So don't invest in things on earth, but all the spiritual things in heaven. So if everybody could figure it out.
Es gab immer wieder Evangelisten, There was die a lot of evangelists who were complaining. Die haben gesagt, they also, told ich denke mittlerweile, die Menschen müssen sich zweimal bekehren. Einmal zu Jesus, the dass sie ihre Sünden vergeben lassen, und dann muss ich when they come to Jesus oh, and then when they uh, open their gute Nachricht und eine schlechte Nachricht. Money to Jesus. Unser, die gute Nachricht the first ist, news is Projekt our next ist project is organization und, äh, auch eigentlich schon bezahlt. and is already paid ist, and the bad Geld news is that the money to pay Euro, it is not in the church but it's in your pocket. So ist also so, immer wieder diese Spannung. That is the tension between uh, retaining uh, the goods and giving it to the church. So die Auszahlung der Schätze ist so also auch eine Perspektive. Jesus hat pay out Warum? all the treasures is what Jesus promised Wenn us. Wenn wir keine Freude haben, If we geben, don't have joy daran, by giving away, it means that we don't have this promise of giving before our eyes. It makes us so insecure. In And sometimes we are in a very uncomfortable place and we so think in a minimalistic way. So God come and motivate us and God told, I'm coming back and I will bring your payout. It should, he is a good bank manager, It, he should like a Swiss guy, and he is giving to you everything according to what you did in your life. So if you're living in a two-room apartment, so you have much more better place in the eternity. So to give is a seed in the kingdom of God. So he's um, explaining it in the Bible dem Bösen, so sondern wenn he jemand say, dich auf deine rechte Backe oder Wange schlägt, if somebody wird, comes and uh, hits you on your right face, you should offer dem, your left one. Geht, so if somebody is will, bringing you to the Mantel. judgment and if If, you, Und wenn jemand dich if somebody wird, take away geben, your mit dem geht's clothes, weit. give your coat to them. If somebody is obliging you System, to walk with you, so walk one mile more. So he's saying that light is stronger than darkness. And he's saying that Goodness is better than weakness. So we should overcome the bad with our good side. It's a very clear guideline, so we know how to behave. If somebody is bad to me, so I have to think, how can I do something good? to him. If somebody comes and uh, take away 50 um, francs from me, I come and give him 50 more. And he, this person will be so ashamed that he, he will think, I want to do something bad to you, but you are, give, you are doing something good to me. There was, um, there was a very interesting story about um, about a war, and Manasseh um, was um, being assaulted. So they had this conflict, and they took hundreds of prisoners to Jericho, according to the leader. 
They should take care of them. They should um, heal their wounds. And all these um, bad dresses they had should be replaced by good ones and give them good food. So Manasseh had peace as long as this king were living, was living. So you note that the Holy Scripture show us a way and Israel is living it these days. So it's written, those who are asking you and who are trying to borrow something from you, don't send them away. You should love your next. And I tell you, love your enemies and those who are persecuting you. It's, it sounds strange. If there was somebody who is thinking in a very challenging way, that was Jesus. So he was from, um, from heaven. He was not from this earth. If two parties who are having a war, never mind if it's Ukraine and Russia or in the East, if they would, if Jesus would come and say we should make peace and embrace each other, um, they would be astonished. So love bind people together and hate separate them. So now I'm talking about this harvest principle, about multiplication. So giving back to those who are your enemy. And he say, God says, I will give you fulfillment. So in the same measure we are measuring others, we will be measured too. So I'm wondering, because since, um, since a while I am um, cooking and I bought a steak, so I was frying the steaks and they were getting smaller and smaller. So I went to, to the supermarket and I was asking them, why, why is my steaking? Small. So this, um, it's like this that the butcher is putting uh, this meat in water. So when you fry it, it will be small. So you note that I was being. Uh, it was a trick. So if you see, uh, it's a robbery. And the industry is doing all these tricks in order to get our money. In which world we are living now. But when God talked to us, he's he's being, talk about being generous. So as a church, I want to, you to understand as according to the measure you are measuring others, you will be measured your, you yourself. So nobody is um, less important than those who are telling you the truth. So your way of tricking out and trying to get the bless of God, so he's helping himself, but he is losing. But if somebody gives your life, his life, so we'll find the Lord. And he will find the truth. So what will help somebody if you have the whole world, but you're losing your life? A lot of things can happen. For instance, uh, your marriage can get bro broken. And how much you would you give for your life? So the spiritual good that a church can have 
is if somebody comes to a church and don't know nothing about God and experience Jesus. So I was coming from a background who was uh, characterized by performance. But as a student, that the German students would go, used to go to USA and came back as a Christian. So they came to a very lively church and came to the faith. So they were bringing this fire. And, you know, USA is an uh, example. It's really fantastic how much money they invest in their church. It's really fantastic how many cultures understood the principle of God and others are thinking they are smarter. But how, what will be um, useful for you if you have a, a lot of money and you don't have no nothing you can buy with that money. So he's talking about is in a spiritual about a spiritual way. What's talking about honesty and we should prove um, and have a look, deep look in ourselves and see how we are dealing with these aspects. As a pastor, I was um, um, uh, leading a lot of um, ceremony when somebody died. So when we are doing the last ceremony to um, say goodbye to these people, we understand that they are going to, to the judgment. And the Bible is saying, be generous. I had a lady in my church who is called Molly Unglaub, and he was really a very... Um, lively lady and he came to a very difficult situation uh, he, her husband was unfaithful to her so she had four children and he, her husband told her she, she would not have should not get anything and years later he, her ex-husband called her and asked this lady to take him home. He was dying. He was in the hospital. So she took him home. And she was taking care of him because he wanted to die home. So he gave everything to her. So she had really a heart according to God. Other would say, oh, let this man die because he was doing so bad to you and you had to fight alone to survive and he was unfaithful to you and so on. But this lady came from another planet. He was she had the power and to support him and help him. Let's go to another topic. We have only one minute and 43 seconds. Uh, yesterday, I had one minute 23. Give me some time and I will make it. Money is something which is spiritual. So take it this message with you. It's mathematically proved. No. We know how much we have, how much can we spend. But there is a lot of rules. Don't give more than you have. Save as much as you can. And don't give more than you have. And there is some index that help us to equilibrate this um, 
uh, aspect of money, but there is a spiritual aspect into it. First, God says that his silver and gold und wir wissen, wie dieses Gold und Silber zu ihm, zu uns Menschen kommt. Belongs to him. We know how his silver and and gold of God is coming to us. And you know how people deal with it. This uh, the industry um, transform the gold in products and see this in a very um, low level, but The Lord makes somebody poor and makes somebody rich. He can um, raise you high and can put you down. And remember Jericho, they could, before I, the Lord was living um, Israel like losers, but, be, but also the devil is spreading money. But all the money that God put into our earth, all this is coming in the hands of man. So in the paradise, God made man to manage all this good. But, but the devil is coming and getting these people and bring out system like communist uh, system who forbids people to believe in God and so on. And like China who is um, imprisoning people who are believers. But God says he, is, he has a possibility to give this good to all these people who belong to him. The devil took Jesus to a very high mountain when he was in the desert and showed him his majesty and everything and told to Jesus, you have to bow down and knee down and I will give everything to you. But Jesus, a very young man, and he was um, not rich, he had a, a mission and he needed money. And he, the devil told, don't worry, nobody will um, see it. And we see that there is the masonry working like this. There is a ceremony to enter the masonry. And there is somebody uh, you will lay down in a, in a coffin and then you belong to us. Everything is a secret. Nobody will talk about it. And there are some people in this um, uh, group who told me about it. There is a, a principle that the devil is giving you something, but he is taking away your soul and taking away your peace. There are people that believe that they get more out of it, but they know how much um, losses they experience and they are not happy at all. And think about Judas. He was, he got 30 coins and he had a very bad end and he had bad conscience about what he did. But Judas, how could the devil get your hurt? That's what Jesus asked Jesus. That's, so God told, we would have to work for what we eat, but God can give you everything in 
One day, there are people who are very close to God. If you say, if you say uh, God can give money to everybody and everybody can, could be rich, but you have to understand that there are some people who are near to God. Remember David that was having a life according to God, and he was somebody who could be devoted to God and also um, humiliate himself in ashes when he recognized he was doing, he did something wrong. Do you notice in your life that you are blocking the bless of God? Have have you get in your life bless, a great bless, and then now you see the bless is getting less because the anointment of the Lord is not the same. But if you now hearing to, if you are hearing the Lord talking to you, just react. You can go back to the Lord and say, I want to humiliate myself. And I want to say, like David said, whatever I did was wrong. Being an egoist is influencing my life. Something bad is influencing my life. I thought I was a smarter, but I noticed that I was harming myself in this way. So let's stand up and pray. Dear friends, those who are here in this service and hearing what I, I told you and the mirror I put in front of you, you know that the Lord's calling you, who wants to give a new direction in your life. And the Lord wants to you to humiliate yourself so he can give you mercy. He is not only calling you to be faithful, he is telling you he is faithful himself. himself. Although you were unfaithful, please be faithful to him and he will be ready to get back to you. And your life will be stronger with his presence. Maybe you were convinced in a negative way to do something wrong, but the Lord is here to help you, to, to encourage you. He's not here to condemn you. He's coming here to help you. And we are his servers. And we, is doing, we are doing it for the Lord. He is the same God as in the past. He wants you to run to him and to tell him, please be merciful to me, have mercy on me. I want to make it right. I want to give back what belongs to you. I have not the community in I'm not being egoist only to the church, but I'm, I'm, I'm being a thief to you. I'm stealing from you. If you want me to pray for you, if you say, please, Pastor, pray for me so I can get back to the Lord, because you know this message is touching you and he want, you want to change. And if you want to have this will in your heart, please raise your hands and say to the Lord, please, Lord, help me. Tell to the Lord, I humiliate myself. I'm humble because I'm asking for for your mercy. I was 
go in the wrong direction. Der Wurzel der Geldliebe keinen Raum. Don't komm, komm, give komm. Wenn a du space dich hast, hebe deine to the Hände love zu of Herrn. the money. Jetzt ist Gnade, But jetzt will er dir raise helfen, your hand dir and geben, God wants to give you strength to organize your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I bless you. Those who are before bittet, God asking for mercy and who are wishing the will jetzt. according to the Lord in their hearts and this will, will clean Gedanken. you and will clean you from all the negative thoughts. That Sünden. God may wash you from all your sins and Jesus may give you a lot so you are Generous, as long as you live on this, on this earth, God may guide you and with his Holy Spirit that your salary will be greater and greater. Oh Lord, Father, I praise you and I pray to you to make this church grow. Let these people home and through live stream and here knows that we are being called for a greater mission. In this day, I thank you for all these people who came to the faith, who are a believer now. I pray that you, we can reach others so they can also be believers. Through a very, very small effort, you can make a lot of it because in you is the power strength this church take care of each of us each of our pastors who are taking care of our sheep everything which is broken and everything that was making our path difficult Make it heal. Just let this fire grow in our hearts so we can make it right. All those who are responsible for this church can be somebody who can multiplicate the believers in this place until the time you come. Let us make the multiplication on our church. Let a lot of things good happen in this church. Ich sehe eine Gruppe von Menschen in einem Gesicht. I see a group of people. Sonderbarerweise in der Natur. And they are in the nature. Da ist eine Stallung auf einer Wiese, And there is wo sich normalerweise a place Pferde oder Kühe drin bewegen können, wenn es regnet. Fields, Platz where these animals like Groß, horses can groß. hide themselves from rain. Dämmerung. And I see Morgendämmerung. the morning Nebel auf den breaking. Viel Nebel and auf I see a new day Gelände. breaking and there is a sun shining in all, all over the places. Nach nach die Sonne, die and shine, der Nebel. little by little all all the smoke is appearing and from this building people are coming out through the field and everything is happening very slowly nobody is running it is as if the light they are seeing they have to get accustomed to it but they are being 
They are coming out of this place into the light, and this place they were before were dark and very narrow. But the Lord is strengthening them through His Word and His presence. Everything that made them stubborn is disappearing. And now you see more and more things with so clear, things that you could not recognize before. I see you smiling and your joy and your thankfulness. And in all these faces coming out of this place, I see this. And I see 50, 60 people doing something new. They are moving. They are much more active. I see they working together. I see a picture of joy and I see they go into this very big field and I bless you so you don't be anxious in this process. I see that they are praying so that they can please the Lord.